Hi everybody, we're finally back um, for another public service announcement for all you awesome Michigan CIA language teachers. All right, so finally we're on here. Uh, you know, I just haven't, I don't know, I just haven't had time lately. Uh, I don't know, but all right, so I know that some of you looked on Facebook Live uh, and I usually would be going, I go on live just before talking L2 with BVP, just like to give people a reminder to tune in and call in to a show. Uh, I called in two weeks ago, answered the diva question, um, share was the answer, not Ben Midler, which it always, always almost seems like the diva question, the answer is going to be Ben Midler, right? No. Um, Barbara Streisand. No, but this time it was Cher, and then I finally yesterday got uh, in the mail uh, a magnet for talking L2 magnet for my refrigerator, which I already got one from Tina Hargaden, but, um, you know, she gave them to me when I stayed at her B&B &B in Lansing for my Willa, and uh, I got a coaster talking L2. Uh, I got a couple talking L2 uh, post, uh, coasters and some Tea with BVP coasters, which uh, are maybe a rarity now because the show's not going on, so maybe... Uh, you know, there's a lot more value to the tea with BBP coasters. Uh, the one French teacher in my school district, I uh, gave her a talk and L2 coaster gift uh, since I had a couple extra. Um, all right, so that takes care of that. I can't really remember what I was going to address on here um, that I said I would give you more of a longer story about things that I addressed. I should have wrote it down. But talking L2 with BVP, uh, he talked about the last four episodes was uh, the words that should be banned for world language education, uh, learner, or um, banning the word student, right, replacing it with the word learner, uh, getting rid of the word foreign, like in foreign language departments and uh, school districts still posting uh, the, 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 the staff under the foreign language department, so the negative connotations that the word foreign has, um, but BVP is also uh, not necessarily on board with the word world either for world language department. And you gotta listen and check that out and see why. Um, and so student and foreign, uh, the word patterns, uh, that was the episode last week, uh, patterns should be, uh, and then uh, yesterday was, uh, or Wednesday, this past Wednesday, was um, the last word, what was it? Um, oh, authentic. So you can go back and listen to those episodes. I called into two of the last episodes, I believe. Uh, one, I was asking about these structured input activities, um, which um, he said to just do away with. Um, like the example that I gave over the phone where you take this little half slip of paper and you've got like three people like I, you, you and he, she or a, per, or a proper name and then underneath you have to either put a check mark or an X and on the right is the sentence bringing the verb into first position basically so that you know students notice it right and maybe highlighting the ending or something so it say something like in Spanish but in English we'll say you know talks to his mom well is it I you or he she where am I gonna put the check mark you know to complete the sentence like subject verb agreement um, but there's like no meaning there right there's no real purpose it's all about form but I could have swore that I saw that in a textbook in my methods class and undergrad methods maybe not my master's degree methods um, and I thought Bill Van Patten co-wrote the book maybe it wasn't in that text in that book because this was 2004, I don't remember. Uh, James Lee, does that sound familiar from input? It's not input to output, maybe making communication happen. But uh, there's a way to do it for that, it's not form-based. Um, for instance, it, it might say something like, put, check a C or no, yes or no, on whether you did the following things last summer. So, you know, you got yes and no all the way down, and on the, other, on the right, whatever, it starts off with the verb in the past tense in the yo form, right? I swam in a lake, I rode my bike, I ran outside, I played golf. So they're saying the endings of jugué, right, and leí and corrí and all that, um, you know, you know, focusing that ending. And it's, it's meaning-based because it's talking about what they did last summer. So they just have to check C or no versus uh, the other way where, you know, they have to pick which person. 
I guess you can kind of, they have to kind of adhere to meaning if you put like a little true and false underneath uh, all of that. And so when you make all the check marks and it goes under I, he, she, you, they, or I, he, she, you, and you only do like three people, first, second, third person, or first person, and we form and they form, you know, not like four. Um, and so once they make all those check marks on, you know, adhering to the, you know, the verb or whatever, then down below it's like true or false. Like, make a statement like, uh, you know, Tom went to the store. But then you look above and you say, well, Tom didn't go to the store because you checked it under the I column for I went to the store. That still probably doesn't really have any meaning to it. But whatever, I could have swore I, I, I saw that in a textbook somewhere, you know, uh, that I had to do for my uh, undergrad. So I don't know. Um, but anyways, we'll stop talking about that. If you know what I'm talking about, um, you know, go ahead and check that out. I don't know why Jane, the word James Lee is coming to mind, but but the other way is fine because it deals with purpose, you know, it, it deals with meaning versus form. Blah, 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 that's enough talk about that. Um, okay, what else? Uh, um, oh, um, yeah, because I'm trying to, I forget, like, you didn't hear any of this that I posted on Facebook Live, or if you're not looking at the Facebook Live videos. Um, Erica Poplinski had like a, um, a webinar on Wednesday after BBP, like around seven o'clock on Fluency Matters website. I wasn't, I didn't know about this until the very last minute, but she did a webinar on how the brain works and functions and how it uh, acquires language. And it was the same stuff that she uh, addressed at the My Willa conference when she had the three hour workshop, which I attended. So, and it was like $25. I wonder if you can still pay for the watch the archives of it or not. Um, but yeah, 25 bucks, you know. Contrary to popular belief, I am not the, uh, the best uh, presenter on comprehensible input in Michigan. It's Erica Poplinski, and probably second to Christy Placido, um, or they're both of them at the same time. So um, yeah, so that's quite interesting. She still has my tripod, by the way, so sometime I have to get over to uh, Celine and go pick up my tripod that's been sitting over there ever since uh, Mitten CI back last April. So <laughs> maybe sometime during this, uh, the two weeks off. Um, anyways, I'm trying to think of what else. All right, uh, science teacher's bringing some stuff in here. I'm in the staff room because I have no classroom by myself, you know, until about 15 minutes from now, and then I have 45 minutes in my class before my uh, eighth grade Spanish one come in. All right, so we have seven minutes. All right, almost eight minutes. Now eight minutes. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Um, I think I mentioned this before, and I'm going to post it again and see if anyone wants to uh, go ahead and take advantage that when I'm putting together these movie talks uh, on the Google Drive, you know, for people to contribute because it takes a long time to put these movie talks together. Um, let me switch this over. These movie talks together because what you have to, you know, screenshot the pictures, right, on the video, pause, screenshot, pause, play, screenshot. So you have all the screenshots and then you paste them on PowerPoint. Um, well, I do. Um, because then I can just click away on the PowerPoint slideshow and go through all the um, the scenes, right? Sometimes people just like screenshot the pictures and then they just open it up and double click and it runs through photo gallery or something like that, which I guess you could do that as well. But I like to blow it up a little bit bigger, put it in a black background on a PowerPoint and go through it. Um, and then, you know, I usually do the movie talk that day and then the following day I'd write up a script for it, okay? Uh, you know, some reading so the kids can read it together. I read it out loud, they read it with me. I might sometimes have them just translate to English for meaning or, you know, a lot of times I just read it because that's just homework assignments that I don't need to grade. Um, but yeah, you have to write, you know, come up with a, an embedded reading. So if you look on that Google Doc, which I'll post the link in the description, feel free and add your own folders. Take the only ones that are, that are in there right now are mine. And I think something I kind of stole from Tim out in um, Taylor area and uh, when I modified it. But make sure you make a copy, you know, if you do that so that you're not, you know, editing uh, what I already have um, 
for movie talks. I did one with a homeless kid standing out in New York City today for my Spanish twos. Um, I'll put that. I'll upload that one today. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free and do that because it's a lot of work. You know, put together movie talks, you have a huge collection of things, and then you can look at the script. You can look at the video and decide if that you know correlates with your uh, you know curriculum or whatever. Um, but most of the time, all the high frequency words, since they're high frequency, they just they're going to naturally come up anyway over anything you talk about, any you know any video. So, you know, you got some people like on IFLT website and things. Yeah, I'm looking for a movie talk that uh, talks about uh, where I can use you know insert grammar point reflexive verbs or something like that. That's not really the I don't think the way to go about things. Um, you know. Uh, you want it to be more natural um, plus I mean you're just you know, it's sort of force inputting the structure I get it and I kind of do that too obviously because my hands are tied uh, to you know um, the textbook curriculum and I just CI the textbook so um, which you know is kind of problematic because if you know you listen to Bill Van Patten he says uh, you know we don't we don't acquire words thematically but yet, we are teaching thematic cur you know, curriculum, the house unit, the chores unit, the childhood unit, the food unit, the school unit. Come on, you know what I'm talking you know, The family, you know, it goes on and on, right? Um, technology unit, traveling unit. So why are we doing that? You know, but I get it, you know, if we're doing that kind of thing, uh, you know, we have movie talks that we go ahead and try to create over a given curriculum, but you can make one for anything and make it work out. It's more important to do every kind of movie talk and just keep on, you know, drilling those, um, uh, do, dr drilling the structures, you know, the high frequency structures, because they just naturally will come up. Right there. Okay. I think I'm, I'm done talking about that. Um, what else? Oh, um, another thing is if you go to classroomtapas.com, if you missed it, uh, you can still go to it. Really cool uh, one hour free webinar thing because you know BVP will do that kind of stuff um, through Classroom Tapas with Jeremy, is that his name? Um, and Sabio Books. Uh, you can check it out. BVP has a PowerPoint he's going through on the screen when you watch it. Um, talking about the nature of language, the nature of communication. Um, so that's pretty, it was pretty cool to check out. Definitely something you might want to give your colleagues in your school district. Um, that's definitely something cool to, to send out to colleagues, I think. Uh, um, it was very concise and understandable um, about, you know, how language happens in the mind slash brain, right? And what's on page 32 is now what winds up in your head. Um, another, I th maybe, I don't know. Someone was, I was talking to somebody the other day about you know maybe compiling the best webinars, uh, books you can buy, uh, YouTube videos, uh, you know of a teacher doing something in their classroom with their students, and BVP episodes, and like combining uh, like what are the best videos slash BVP shows. Uh, you know, class teaching, you know, teacher teaching their students and books that one can get to, you know, seeing how using CI works in the classroom. Maybe I'll try to start compiling something like that and have somebody else help me, probably Erica or something, or because um, you know one of Tina Hargan's videos will come up and uh, the book while we're on the topic. Um, and maybe from input to output, perhaps, that book, um, as well as maybe one of my videos or two, doing my little story, um, as well as, uh, you know, one good video of somebody doing a, a Reader's Theater, uh, what you think might be one of the best Hargaden videos out there, and one of my best videos, or anybody else. There's that one woman I, I'm gonna put in her, uh, one teacher, uh, this video on one word image um, that I just saw, I didn't watch it, it's in its entirety yet, but I'll put the, that in the description. So a good video on OWI, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, what, one of the best videos that a teacher who wants to start tapping into CI, you know, from a video from um, 
um, Annabelle Allen? Is there one from Grant? You know, maybe one from Mike Pito, right? So, in fact, go ahead, put a link in or let me know down in the Facebook comments when I embed this video or in the YouTube comments um, what kind of video, you know, do you have any suggestions on something we can compile for somebody who is tapping into using CI in the classroom? Um, so I was having a discussion with somebody about that, having that kind of idea. I think we're going to do that. You know, what better way, way to spend my time on my 16 days off? So I'll put that together as well. Um, so, what else? Oh, and another thing is, a teacher was asking me, quite a few of them, because um, especially on my presentations, the one I did at My Willow recently, you know, about doing special person, and they want to see that in action. I'm sure there's language teachers there out there on, you know, on YouTube that maybe film the one student sitting on a stool in the middle of the room or a chair and doing the special person stuff. Um, but what I might end up doing is, I guess someone asked me to, uh, asked if I have any uploads of special person and I, I, I don't know where I, I did a couple of them but I didn't post them on YouTube because the students in the camera and even though he or she said it was fine but I don't know if I'm treading you know I don't know if that that's not that's not a line I should be walking on I don't know um, but, but I see people do that on YouTube with students like so what's the you know I don't think there's an issue but um, but I am going to record a video that explains special person, you know, step by step, and how I introduce it in, in my Spanish one and two classes is from the beginning of the year and the 12 questions that I ask the student in the middle of the room, uh, and everybody's listening, tracking the speaker, and you know, all these questions that I, I even do in level one in the second week of school. And maybe some teachers are like, Wow, so he's already asking them, where would you like to travel someday in the second week of school? You know, what, what about, you know, learning the alphabet or, you know, saying what time it is? So, um, I don't know, I just think it's more compelling to ask, you know, them, you know, where would you like to travel someday? You know, how many siblings do you have? What's your favorite social media? What do you like to listen to? How old are you? Where you live? Where are you from originally? What sport do you play? Um, what do you like to watch on YouTube? Right? I mean, you know, those questions are, you know, it's what it's what the kids are all about, right? So, you know, introducing that like in second week of level one. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and detail that out, and then um, maybe I'll have like a student or something. Yeah. Um, because I'm already done with special person now with all my students, so maybe what I might do is get a volunteer to be special person uh, and get like a crowd of 10 kids and come in during lunch or recess during my, uh, you know, and we'll go ahead and re uh, recreate uh, that lesson in class. Um, I only did one board image only one time, so I plan on doing that again. Um, it didn't work out as how I really wanted to, but what really, I don't know, a lot of things don't work out to how you expect it to be when it's the first time you've done it. Um, my, so, I don't know, I'll try one word image again next week. Um, you know, it's very impromptu and no prep. Uh, and you can also, you can also make it like, if you're doing a vocab list, you can tie it into your curriculum, you know. So if the kids suggest, like if you're in the clothing unit or something, you know, have the students, you know, ask for like a certain object, like an apple or, uh, you know, yeah, let's just say an apple. Okay, there's an apple. Is it green or is it red? They say red. I'm like, okay, uh, what do you think? Um, uh, is he wearing a scarf? Okay. Is he wearing a bathing suit? Okay. A hat? Oh, okay. Uh, what color is the bathing suit? You know, and then you start, and then eventually you have a drawing of a, an apple, you know, wearing a, you know, blue scarf and a, a pink hat and some boots. Why? Because it's cold. And at the end, you know, as an exit ticket, you ask them, like, why, you know, uh, why is he sad? Because everything, we're going to put an emotion on the, and on the character as well. Tired, sad, happy. Right, and then and then you decide whether or not that that character is going to become a character in the story later on. 
I just keep on talking. Wow, I got like 20 minutes here. Because it's Friday and I'm all set for what I'm gonna be doing in my class in the next half hour. Um, and uh, the quizzes I have to grade, and I can wait till Sunday. Uh, I guess that's about it, but I mean, this video was a long time coming, and it's like I have three hours off in between uh, my Spanish twos at the high school and Spanish one here. I mean, I got three hours off every day, so I get everything done. So, all right, I guess that's about it. So stay tuned for some of those videos. Look in the, you know, the description and everything. I'm Darren Way. All of you are awesome. Uh, teachers who use comprehensible input in the classroom and in the words of BVP, happy second language acquisition to all. Bye.